this is going to answer the question in regards to a lake of fire being on the earth in the millennium. And this is a tough question. And you can tell somebody's been studying their Bible when they ask questions like this or have a question concerning this. But I've looked at this off and on over the years, and I do, I do believe that it's true. But have you ever heard the saying, hell on earth? You see, all these common sayings that people use, they come from the Bible. And here it is, hell on earth. And you know how right before the millennium, at the second coming, heaven comes down. You have Jesus Christ, his throne, his horses, his saints coming down to the earth. Well, it seems like a little bit of hell comes up as well. And this is one of those things that is not a fundamental to the faith. And I would not break fellowship with anyone who didn't believe it. And I wouldn't even be shocked if I was wrong on a lot of it that I'm going to even say. But it looks like this thing is in the scriptures. So the question has to do with a lake of fire being on earth in the millennium. So I'm going to talk about why is there a lake of fire on earth during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or why is it possible that there could be? Or what settles it that there is a literal lake of fire on the earth during the millennium? A couple of things that people forget about the millennium is that there is still sin and death in the millennium. Revelation 24 Revelation 21 and verse 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. But this is after the millennium that this happens, when the Lord brings in a new heaven and a new earth. See, before that, there's still death, there's still sorrow, there's still sin. The millennium, it's going to be a great place. It's going to be as close to heaven on earth as it gets without being that but there's still going to be death there's still going to be sin people also forget that it isn't only going to be church age saints and glorified bodies but also tribulation saints who are not in glorified bodies and they will be having children during this time there will also be nations that go into the millennium that were good to the jews during the time of jacob's trouble so remember not everyone has a glorified body in the millennium. And this is proven with verses like Isaiah 65, 20, that says, There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days, for the child shall die an hundred years old. But the sinner, being an hundred years old, shall be accursed. And then Isaiah eleven eight says, And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put his hand on the cockatrice tent. So there's going to be small children. There's going to be people living, uh, you know, pre-flood ages. And again, these people, not everybody's going to have glorified bodies. It's just the born-again believers. And there's going to be people cast bodily into hell. You see, when I die right now, if I was lost, it would be my soul going to hell. My body would go to the grave. But you're going to have people cast bodily into a lake of fire in the millennium. In Matthew chapter 5, you have the constitution for the kingdom. In Matthew 5, 29 through 30 says, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Thy whole body. Someone's going to be cast bodily into hell. And if thy right eye offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So the born-again believer now is in no danger of the lake of fire. In the millennium, in your glorified body, your, your eternal security is eternal. You ha you're in no danger of being cast into the lake of fire. You will have a glorified body. You have the mind of Christ. You will be sinless and in perfect fellowship with God. But there will be people that will be in danger of this. So you have people from other nations coming to Jerusalem during the millennium to worship the Lord. And they will see the carcasses of men that have transgressed against the Lord in a visible lake of fire. 
So look at Isaiah 66, 22 through 24. It says, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So when they're going back and forth to worship before the Lord, they're going to see a lake of fire. They're going to see people burning. So the nations will come to Jerusalem to worship, and they'll see a lake of fire as they come and go. So why is this? Why is this lake of fire on the earth? Number one, it's to remind them who is in charge. This lake of fire will be formed at the Lord's second coming, right before the millennium. This is when the Lord comes down with all the saints after the time of Jacob's trouble to take charge and to take over. 2 Thessalonians 1.8 says, In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This fire at the second that Jesus brings to them at the second coming forms a lake of fire, a literal hell on earth. And Isaiah 34 talks more about it. Isaiah 34, 8, it says, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. If you've studied the Bible, what's the day of the Lord? What's the day of the Lord's vengeance? It's the second coming. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, and the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night nor day, just like the fire in Isaiah 66. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. Eternal fire. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it in the owl. And the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. When those people of those, nation, of those nations see that lake of fire. It's going to be a reminder who's in charge. It is the man that came down on a white horse, Jesus Christ, and they will tell their kids about it. Can you imagine people being born in the millennium, and they don't know a world any different, and their parents tell them how they survived the tribulation, they survived everything else. And you talk about some stories. Uh, some grandpa will say he survived hailstones about the weight of a talent. That's a lot worse than walking a mile to school in the snow, if you ask me. But it's going to be a reminder who's in charge, who's on the throne. And they're going to remember if they were alive and they're from those nations that went into the millennium. They're going to remember Jesus Christ coming at the second coming and the power. But what is another reason that it is not far-fetched that there is a literal lake of fire on earth? It's because... During this time, they operate by sight. Now, Paul says today, we walk by faith and not by sight. That changes. That changes after the church leaves. That changes in the tribulation. And it's, they operate by sight in the millennium. John twenty twenty nine. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Now, in the millennium, that shows you it's different because Thomas saw Jesus and believed. There's going to be people in the millennium. They're believing because they're seeing it. They're operating by sight. They're, op they're, they're going by things that they see. Hebrews 11.1 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's going to be more about sight than it is faith. You have a, you're going to have a visible representation of life on earth true and eternal life, Jesus Christ, and people walking around in glorified bodies. And at the same time, during the millennium, you're going to have a visible representation of death, the lake of fire, and the carcasses burning in the lake of fire. You see, you see those people are going to be coming to worship and going back and forth. They're going to see those. They're going to be reminded. They're going to be operating by sight. And they're going to see what happens when they go against the king. Now, number three, why is it not far-fetched? Why is it possible that the lake of fire could be on the earth? Because the Lord leaves your options open. 
The Lord gives you an option. He gives you a free will. All the way through the Bible, from the beginning to the ending, there's a free will going on. God doesn't just want robots. He wants people that voluntarily love Him, want to serve Him, want to be with Him. Throughout the Bible, God gives people the free will to choose Him or to choose death. It's no different in the millennium. The Lord will want you to choose Him as He sits on the throne in Jerusalem. But He gives you the option to go against Him. It's like this throughout the Bible. Think back before the fall in Genesis, Adam and Eve, Genesis 2, 16 through 17. He gave them two choices. It was up to them to choose whichever one. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. And Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. He gave them an option. They either eat of it or they don't eat of it. If they ate of it, they're going to have to face the consequences. If you go against the Lord in the millennium, you have to face the consequences. So they had two choices. So that was before the fall. Then you have after the fall, people still have a choice. Rebecca has the option of becoming Isaac's wife or staying home with her family. She is a picture of the bride of Christ. She made the right choice. Rebecca says, I will go. It was on her of her own free will in Genesis twenty four, fifty eight, that she chose to go be with Isaac. Then you see the offerings in the book of Leviticus are offered of a man's own voluntary will. Leviticus one three, the burnt offering offered of his own voluntary will. Joshua in Joshua twenty four fifteen makes the right choice. He says, "Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood." Or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua made the right choice. But there was people who didn't make the right choice. There was people on the other side of the flood. That chose the gods. False gods. And what happened? The consequence of flood. You see, there's choices. And there's consequences to those choices. That's the way it's going to be in the millennium. New Testament. Everyone knows this. It's whosoever will. Whosoever will. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But you don't have to. The Lord wants you to. But you don't have to. It's your choice. Romans six twenty three. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a consequence if you don't. The wages of sin is death. In the tribulation. Same thing. They got a free will. In regards to taking or not taking the mark of the beast, they don't have to take it. Revelation fourteen eleven, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. Once you see that smoke, that same smoke, Isaiah thirty four. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. It was whosoever receiveth. It was of their own free will. They didn't have to take the mark. They could have received the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't have to take the mark of the beast. You either receive the mark and the beast or you choose Jesus Christ and do what he wants you to do. There's always a choice. In the millennium, there are still choices being made. There's still sin proving that even though the devil has been chained in the bottomless pit and the Lord has made unclean spirits to pass out of the land, as the Bible says, people still sin because there will still be people in natural bodies of sinful flesh. And this proves that this sinful flesh is a mess. And when Satan is loosed, he will lead a revolt. He will make an army composed of people who have seen the Lord Jesus Christ and seen him run a perfect kingdom. They still choose the devil. In Revelation 20, 7 through 10, it talks about this. And when the thousand years are expired, at the end of the millennium, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of them as, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. A lot of people are going to rebel against the Lord Jesus Christ. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and comp compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. 
and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are so they were already they were already in hell in the lake of fire before this because you remember they got tossed into the lake of fire at the second coming and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever now is this lake of fire the same as on the earth in the millennium or is this the lake of fire that men are tossed into at the great white throne? That's a tough question. That's something that I'm not clear about. Could be two different lake, lakes of fire. It probably is. It does seem that the beast and false prophet are cast into the one that will be on the earth. Because, it, because when they're initially tossed into the lake of fire, the beast and the false prophet, it's happening at the second coming. When that lake of fire is being formed on the earth, right before the millennium, look at Revelation 19, 19 through 21. It says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. So the setting is Jesus Christ on his horse with his army, the beast and his armies going against him. This is the at the second coming, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. So they're cast into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That could be the one on the earth. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Also taking into consideration that in the Old Testament, you had men falling bodily into a pit and men saw it. It was a deterrent to further wickedness. It says in Numbers 16, 31 through 33, And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods, they and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. So these people saw these people falling into hell, basically. And this was a deterrent to crime. These people were going against Moses. He showed people they better not go against Moses. When people see uh, people cast bodily into the lake of fire in the millennium for going against the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to show the other people around they don't need to go against the Lord Jesus Christ. Also consider how a lake of fire in the millennium would not be the first hell on earth. That's another reason that, you know, it's not far-fetched. In Revelation 6, 8, it says, And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that set on him was death, and hell followed with him. So hell comes up in the tribulation. Revelation 6, 8, it's not far-fetched at all. With our minds right now, our mind cannot grasp seeing. Mind can't. He can't grasp, you know, walking somewhere and then you, you just see people burning in a lake of fire i mean you can you can picture it but you really can't you, you can imagine what that would be like but don't forget most of the stuff going on in the millennium you can't hardly imagine for example people will be living much longer it goes back to pre-flood ages you will have born-again believers walking around in glorified bodies that can teleport and they can't be killed they have the mind of Christ. You will have God on earth where you can visibly see him on a throne. It will be like what the fantasy movies attempt to copy, although it will be infinite times greater. So, I mean, this was this is a tough question. And when you get questions like this, it shows people study the Bible. So there's some people out there that still study the Bible and they ask questions like this. It's not an everyday question that you would get from somebody or that I get from somebody. I've never had anybody ask me this in person. So this shows that the person who asked this, they study the Bible, and it's encouraging to me that people still study the Bible, still have questions. I love to talk about the Bible. There's not many people to fellowship with when it comes to the Bible because people don't read the Bible anymore. So, you know, if you have a question, as... As I said before, I put my email on there. 
hensleybiblebeliever at gmail.com. And I would like to start doing these question and answer videos. So if you send your question to that email, hensleybiblebeliever at gmail.com, I'll put it in the video. That way you can, you can easily read it and see it. Ask any question you would like. Or if you just want to make a comment or talk about the Bible, send it to that email and I will try to get it up as soon as possible. No question is stupid. We're all on different levels in our journey through the Bible. So some questions may be easy. Some questions may be hard. I may not know the answer to it, but I'll try to find the answer to it. If I don't know the answer to it, that way I can learn. I'll learn something too. And I mean, I, I've already done about four of these. And they've all helped me, even though I already knew the answers to all of them. It's like it it clicked in my mind again. So it's very beneficial to me at the same time. So yeah, just send your question, Hensley Bible Believer at gmail.com.